What is up, guys? This is the very first podcast of Prestige Knowledge. My name is King Jess. A Hancho. And we're very excited to bring you all this knowledge that we have, our experiences, how to get rich, what we did to get rich. I mean, it's everything. And today we're talking about financial literacy. Financial literacy, the breeding ground to success. Um, I feel like if you don't know what financial literacy is, or if you're not financial uh, financially literate, then you're not going to be able to be successful. That's very, that's very true. I mean, financial literacy is the cornerstone for every single person who has made money. Because even with the people who made money, a lot of money, in a short period of time, they're not able to keep it because they don't have financial literacy. So before you can attain any money, you have to have the knowledge. You're going to have to have the knowledge. And of course, financial literacy, a lot of people come into a lot of money. And like you said, you know, they're not able to sustain it. And that goes into a big factor with dealing with discipline, values and a whole bunch of other things that we're going to get into in this podcast. Right. Exactly. And I mean, before we were able to make any kind of money, we had to acquire the knowledge, knowledge from reading books, watching videos, buying courses, whatever we did was in order to obtain that knowledge to get the money. And without that knowledge, we wouldn't have been able to make anything. Think about when you got your first job, right? What, is, what was the first thing that they did? It was an orientation. So they could teach you everything you needed to do so you could be successful at your job. Well, just like being rich, you need an orientation. And this is that orientation. A hundred percent. I feel like a lot of people see successful people and think like, hey, man, they might have got it easy. But I want you guys to know that even top rappers, top artists, actors, all of those people are extremely financially literate. OK, they are not just invested in their music. They're not just invested in their acting careers or whatever it may be. They're also heavily invested in other sources of incomes that keeps their money generating for them. Right. Exactly. And I think we're seeing a lot more of the famous celebrities and um, players get into the financial space i've had plenty of nba players and nfl players dm me because a lot of these people have seen their um their counterparts make a lot of money and lose it all after retirement and so they've come because they see the knowledge that is there in order to hold this money that they have and they don't want to end up like a lot of people who obtain this money and then lose it because they don't have the knowledge so a lot of people are seeking this knowledge and that's what we're here to give you guys because if you get money and you don't have the knowledge you'll lose it easily and kind of tapping in with that, um, recently, it kind of blew my head. You know, Kevin Garnett actually DM me. And he was like, yo, I love what you're doing. I love all the knowledge you're putting out there. And then I was just like, I was actually starstruck. I was like, wow, Kevin Garnett is reaching out to me to tell me that, you know, he loves what I'm doing. I'm only, you know, I'm a 20 year old investor and he's a Hall of Fame NBA player. And that just shows you that, you know, it doesn't really matter what space you're in. Investing is key to building success. OK, we were chopping it up for a good amount of time, you know, I gave him my number, all this other stuff. And he was just like, look, man, if you ever want to invest for me, then, you know, we can definitely set something up. And I was like, man, Kevin Garnett wants me to invest for him. You know what I'm saying? These are all now he's a Hall of Famer, multimillionaire, over $200 million. And again, it's the financial literacy that taps into play that he's like, yo, um, I see this guy out here doing it. If he can do it and I already know the space and what he's doing, then I think I should tap in with him, too. And let's, you know, make all let's all make money together. And to tap into that, I want people to realize that anyone can make money. Money is being made every day. The government this year alone has printed half the dollars that are on the market today. They printed this year. If you have an imagination and you're creative, you can literally create money. You can create ways to make money, whether it's through e-commerce, through opening your own trucking business, through investing in stocks through making um, an apparel company. There are so many different ways to create money. There is no reason why in this day and age with the online atmosphere that we have now that you can't create the amount of wealth that you want to create. And that all just starts with getting the knowledge that you need to create that. And people are doing that every single day. I just made $4,000 in one week and on an e-commerce store that I created in front of my followers in order to show them how easy it is to make that kind of money. And so there is all these different kinds of ways to make money online these days. There's no reason why you're still dependent solely on a nine to five or on your job. Exactly. And I think that all goes towards the systematic thinking. Uh, the systematic thinking is, hey, you know, you make one hundred thousand dollars a year. You're good. You know, you can chill out. You know, you make eighty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars a year. You're good. Relax. But I think what a lot of people don't know or what a lot of people don't realize is that like money is an unlimited resource. Again, like what you said. They print money. All right. The government prints money every single day. So if there is somebody out there making a million dollars or somebody making a billion dollars, why try to do something that hasn't been tapped into? Just do what he's doing. He's making a million dollars from an e-commerce store. Go create an e-commerce store and try it out. But I think a lot of people are just too scared to take that risk. Right. A lot of people are 
extremely comfortable in the position that they're at, you know, working a nine to five job, that security of having that nine to five paycheck, pay for their bills and living in that sense of being comfortable. And I feel like once you can actually step out of that comfort zone and start to take risk, you actually see um, financial freedom and you can start being a lot more successful. And, 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 and check this out, man. Imagine to everyone here watching right now, quit your job today, right? Quit your job completely and find yourself with no with no regulate with no paycheck coming in. And what are you going to do? See, that that theory in itself is 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 extremely interesting to me because watch how your brain will start creating ways to make the money that you need. When you're stuck in the 9 to 5 trap, when you're stuck in that mindset and that lifestyle, you've been working at a job for so long and you have that regular paycheck coming in, you get so used to that regular paycheck that you no longer are looking for ways to make money but that's the problem with the today's societies we're no longer looking for ways to make money because we're so comfortable but if you i'm not saying to quit your job but i'm saying that opens up so many different avenues of making money once you realize that you don't need someone to pay you there are so many other different ways of making money and so sometimes you have to tap into that creative side of your brain in order to start thinking of ways to make money and that's what we did and we were able to make i mean we're not just talking about stock investing we're talking about all kinds of investing that we were able to tap into because our creativity just started going because we were never dependent on a paycheck not only just that very very true but also i think it was the discipline i, I think it was our true. level of discipline in order to be successful you're gonna have to have an extreme amount of discipline all right, now I always say this, you wanna be successful, I'll tell you how to be successful. Write down a list of goals, write down 10 goals. And one of those goals, at the end of your list, number 10, make number 10 to be a millionaire, right? And don't make it to be a millionaire simply because you want the millions. Make it because of what the process of being, of becoming a millionaire will make you, all right? Because to become a millionaire, you're gonna to have to tap into a completely different space that you didn't even know you could tap into. You're gonna to have to have an extreme amount of discipline, you're gonna to have to increase your values, you're going to have to do things that you didn't even think were possible. I right? Just that alone will make you into a completely different person and will make you a successful minded person, which will, of course, lead to success. Very true. And, and to tap into that, I want you to think about this. During my history, right, as a worker, I had 10 different jobs. 10. I worked at Macy's, Target, Amazon, Walmart, Taco Bell, McDonald's and um, Red Robin. Oh, and um, Olive Garden. So that's 11 jobs. And I quit every single job. I never had a job where I was working for more than two weeks. And why is that? Because I was never built into the mindset of working for anyone. That's not what I was here to do. That wasn't my calling. The reason why I quit so early is because even if I had a good job that was paying me well, I knew that they would never be paying me, never could they pay me enough for my time. I don't care if they were paying me $50 an hour. I know that in that span of an hour, I could be at home making more than $50 using my brain, yeah. using my knowledge and using my talents. There was never a point in time where the amount of money a job was paying me was worth my time. And so you need to calculate how much is your time worth? Is that job that you're working worth $12.95 uh, an hour? Is it worth $13, $15 an hour? How much is your time worth? And that's going to decide whether you need to stay working there, whether you can make more money outside of it. And every single job I had was never worth my time. And that's the reason why I quit. And that's the reason why I'm in the position I'm right now. Because I knew in order to get where I wanted to be, I couldn't be in the system that I was supposed to be in. I went to high school, did all four years. I went to college, did all four years. And at the end of the day, it wasn't for me. I went to school, got my finance degree, couldn't do it, you know? And that was the decision I had to make for my life. And that's the decision every single one of you are going to have to make for yours. 100%. And that kind of just taps in, you know, to your values too. You know, I feel like a lot of people think that making a million dollars a year is good money, right? Making a yeah. million dollars a year is good money. It's good money. <clears throat> Making a million dollars a year is good money. Okay, but what good is that million dollars a year if you can't be happy with it? What good is a million dollars a year if you can't spend time with your family? What good is that million dollars if you can't go on vacation, if you can't enjoy that money because you're constantly working? You see, a lot of people think that if you're a millionaire, you're rich. It's wrong, right? There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. Wealthy is when you have your time, right? Wealth gives you back your time. Being rich, you just have an abundance of money, but what you wanna be is wealthy. And if you wanna be wealthy, you're gonna to have to get back that time. And if you wanna get back your time, you're gonna to have to invest in some passive streams of income that pay you while you sleep. There's a saying that uh, by Warren Buffett that I kind of live by right now. If you don't make money while you sleep, 
you work until you die. And I think that everybody watching this video right now needs to like write that down and like put it on the wall. Because if you don't make money while you sleep, a lot of people are working till they die right now and they don't even realize it. See, a lot of people watching this are young. They're our age. They're in their 20s to 30s. And your 20s to 30s is the time to explore. It's the time to take risk and risk losing that money because yeah. you have time to make it back. See, when you're 60 years old and you're about to retire, you cannot, you cannot risk uh, losing that money because you have to retire. You have a family to think about. You have other responsibilities, a mortgage, payments you have to make. But when you're in this age range, it's the time to experiment. It's the time to open 10 different businesses and watch them all fail because you can open 10 more until one of those works. And I guarantee you one of those will work and that could be your million dollar mm -hmm business that will set you free for the rest of your lives but a lot of us are stuck in that mindset of working so we will never take that risk we stay in that secure job for 10 20 30 years never take the risk and work until we die and that's why warren buffett said that he took the risk and a lot of people are taking that risk and that's the only way that you can escape there is no shortcut there is no easy route stop listening to these people trying to sell you dreams of a get rich quick scheme there isn't one there's only hard work dedication and time and the more time that you have, the more likely you are to make money. The more time you waste, the more you're likely you are to die working. 100%. You know, 100%, uh, man. There is no magic bullet. You know, there, there, is, there is no golden gun. There is nobody waiting at the end of the line saying, hey, I got a million dollars for you. Hey, I'm going to do this for you. No. All right. You want to be successful? Number one is this. Increase your value. All right. Now, I'm just going to keep it 100%. Do you know the reason why? You're stuck in the position why, that you are right now is because you're in a job that anybody can do. I'm just going to be honest. You know, a lot of people want to get paid more doing things that everybody can do. Everybody can stock shelves. Everybody can flip patties. But you know what everybody can't do? They can't scale up a business to a million dollars. They can't trade stocks. They can't look at a chart and analyze that. So if you want to become successful, increase, increase your value set. Learn skills that nobody really knows how to do or there's a small percent of people who knows how to do it. There's a reason why there's a 99% and a 1% because 99% of people can't do what the 1% do. Well, they can do it. They just don't put their mind towards it. And that's the reason why you have to have a million dollar mindset in order to be successful. That's extremely true. And and to talk about that, I want to refer to um, someone that I talked to actually recently. Um, and it was a young man, a young man I was talking to on Instagram live and we were on a three way and the man was challenging me and I, and I accepted the challenge because I never backed down from one. And he said, why are you selling people dreams when you know that most of them will not succeed? And, and that, that struck with me. That struck a chord with me yeah. because to be honest with you, I, it insulted me because here's the thing. Let's say you're on the football team, right? And you have 99 people on that team. Let's say 100 people on that football team. And, and I've told the, I've, all, the whole team wants to go D1 and they all want to go pro, make a living and feed their family, right? Now I have all these talented kids and I tell them, you know what, guys? Most of you guys, if not all of you guys, are not going to make it to D1, and most of you guys aren't even going to make it to the league. Now, if 1% of those people were going to make it to the league, I just told whichever kid that was that they weren't going to make it, and I just crushed Jed Dream, and they are no longer striving to go D1, all because I told them that the statistics show that they will not make it D1. Now I just crushed his dream. Now I have 100,000 people on my Instagram and a million people on TikTok. And I just told them, well, guys, the majority of you aren't going to make it. So you should probably just stick to your nine to five. Well, I just told that one kid who could have started that business that he was never going to do. It, and I just crushed the dreams of a millionaire because I told them that the general majority won't do it. Well, he could have done it. So why would I go around not giving people the knowledge to actually acquire this wealth and acquire this freedom when a percentage of them can make it? Why would I tell them that they aren't going to do it when there's a chance that they can and crush their dreams? I would never do that. And that's the reason why we have this podcast. That's the reason why we have our, our platform so we can show that 1% of kids that there is a way that they can do what the, what the people that they're looking up to can do. Yeah. Because again, it's the one percenters. All right. We already know that not everybody can be rich. Okay. That's a given. Not everybody can be rich. I want you guys to know that not everybody can be rich. Okay, majority um, will still be 99% and that will be for the end of time. When I die, when everybody, you know, new generations come, there's still going to be majority 99% because of course, there's going to be a majority of people who think that they can't do it or think that they have to live a mediocre life or, uh, or an on par life, you know, to be successful or to live comfortable. But I think it's it's like this, right? Once you can tap into those different values and you can acquire that discipline, then it becomes a lot more easy. I agree 100%.
you have to tap into that because it nothing is easy. Like we yeah, we tell people easy. all the time, anyone that's selling you a get rich quick scheme, they're lying to you for their own profit. And here's another thing that I don't like on Instagram and on social media. There are these fear mongering influencers who try to scare you into submission, into yeah. buying something from them. They'll tell you that that the housing market is going to crash, the stock market is going to crash, and they'll pound it into your head. Every time I go on these social media accounts and they're selling courses, of course, I look at their social media and all they do, as soon as I go on their page, my anxiety has gone up because all they do is scare their followers yeah. into thinking that something is going to happen so that they can buy something from them for their prosperity. But that's not what we do here. We're showing you ways to make money for your family in ways that are, are showing you positivity. And to give you inspiration and motivation, not to scare you into submission like some of these people do. And that's the whole point. You, if you have people on your social media, as soon as you click on it, your anxiety goes up, you're, you're, um, you're, you get sad or you get anything that's not positive in your life, you need to block it completely out of your life. And that goes for relationships, even family that isn't, that's bringing negative, negativity in your life. Don't be afraid to cut things out of your life it's, if it's going to benefit you. Because at the end of the day, you only have control over your life. Nobody else is. You only have control over what you post, no one else. So don't allow that negative energy into your life. 100%. And kind of going back to that whole family and friend situation, I think that family and friends play the biggest role and toll in your life. I agree. It can make or break you, okay? I want, I'm going to repeat it. Family and friends can make or break you. Okay, so I'm going to say this. If you have five friends, they don't have to be millionaire friends. They don't have to have a bunch of money. But if you have five friends who think like you, who want to be successful like you, I guarantee you that all five of you will become successful. I agree. But if you have six friends, right, and all they do is go around, party all day, smoke weed all day, drink all day, try to turn up all day, then guess what? You're going to be the sixth bum in that situation. And you're never going to be able to change that situation because you're going to get so comfortable in that situation. The reason why you can see two successful black men sitting here right now, why is because we both had the same mindset. We both wanted to be, we both wanted to be successful equally as hard. So what did we do? We pushed one another to reach that level. Literally. And and to tap into that, you are your friend group. You will become what your friend group is and don't take it any lighter than that. It's the cold hard facts. If you have friends that just that just hang around smoking all day, hang around drinking all day, have no motivation, are getting no money, are getting are on to no bigger goals, you are that friend that will be going to no bigger goals. I'm telling you right now, you need to cut off those friends, you need to cut off that family, you need to cut off everyone in your life that is going nowhere in life, and you need to do it today, because otherwise you're wasting more time, you're gonna end up just like them. That 100%, and I, again, family. I think so many people are scared to cut off family. And family can pay the biggest toll. Not my family. I can't say this from experience, but I have seen it where family, you know, they kind of, they first they make it off as a joke. Huh, you're still doing that business or, hey, why don't you just get a job? Or, hey, man, you're still trying to make money from that business. Look, take the facts from it. All right. When they somebody says that to you, take it as what they're saying. They're saying that you're not going to be successful. They don't believe in your dreams. You're just, you know, a guy who's not going to achieve anything with your dream. I need you to I need you guys to understand how serious your dream really is. I need you guys to how understand how serious your vision really is. And if anybody doesn't respect your vision, if any does if anybody doesn't respect your dream, they need to go, right? Because if you have one person that doubts your dream and you tap into them, right? And you're like, "Ah," and you start doubting your dreams, you start doubting your vision, and you don't become successful because that one person said you couldn't do it then it's that person's fault and your fault that you did not become successful because you let that person collude your dreams and your vision because they thought that it wasn't possible. Why? Because they couldn't do it. It tends to be when somebody can't do it themselves, they want to bring you down to their level. It tends to be when somebody can't be successful for themselves or they feel like it's impossible for themselves, they want to tell everybody around them that it's impossible. No, you just can't do it. You don't have the heart. You don't have my vision. You don't have my goals. Right. And that's the reason why you can't share your dreams with everybody. No, you really can't. And I'm going to say that again. You can't share your dreams with everybody because not everybody's going to understand you. Not everybody's going to under you. Not everybody's going to be able to see what you dream. Not everybody's going to be able to see your visions. You have to only share your dreams and your vision with people who can understand your dreams and your vision. People who can tap in with you on that level. See, people who can tap in with you on the intellectual level. I agree 100%. I mean, um, and, and like you said, anyone that is telling you that you can't do something is because they couldn't do it. And so it's easier for them to tell you that you can't do it as well 
because that way they don't have to face the failure that they had and instead they can put push that on into the atmosphere that you will fail as well when you can in fact do it yourself and it's been done before so there are a lot of times for example when i started wholesaling real estate i could make 10 to twenty thousand dollars per deal and so I would post about it and someone would be like, it's oversaturated. Mm -hmm. And I hear that all the time with e-commerce and, and real estate and stocks. And I say to myself, if I'm making a million dollars, if I'm making six figures a month and a million dollars a year, how is it oversaturated? Oh, if I have students who are doing the exact same thing and start making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month, how is it oversaturated? No, you just don't had the skills to do it and you failed and so now you're pushing that out into the atmosphere yeah. it is not oversaturated there is so much money out there right now that hasn't been tapped into and as soon as you say it's oversaturated you've copped yourself out of the deal yeah. and you've taken that failure in for yourself before you even tried 100%. and there is never a, a a business that is oversaturated when there are still people making money it doesn't even make sense yeah. and it doesn't even make sense to say something like wholesaling real estate or e-commerce can be saturated i imagine if jeff bezos said hey i'm not going to create amazon because e-commerce is oversaturated doesn't make sense or or mark zuckerberg said hey i'm not going to create facebook because it's oversaturated or grant cardone said hey i'm not going to invest in real estate because it's oversaturated it doesn't make sense things like that can never become oversaturated right. okay there are billionaires and millionaires making money from this every single day if somebody's telling you something is oversaturated they're just trying to bring you down to their level because they can do it themselves exactly. and it's just as simple it's just as simple as that exactly. when somebody can't do it for themselves they're going to try bring everybody down to their level so that they don't they don't end up being successful exactly i've seen people open e-commerce stores that were open for a week and they didn't get couldn't get a sale they had the wrong marketing they had the wrong ads they had the wrong store they had the wrong niche they came back to me and said it's oversaturated <laughs> i said bro what <laughs> you did everything wrong and you're gonna come back to me and tell me it's oversaturated you did everything wrong i literally sat this guy down we redid his ads we redid his marketing we redid his store we redid his products we got him a new niche he made ten thousand dollars that same month and came back to me and said bro i swear everyone was telling me it was oversaturated that's the only reason why i said that yeah. because everyone does everyone's failing the same way you were failing they didn't have the knowledge yeah. it starts with what you know if you don't know anything you how can you succeed it right. makes no sense all right so i'm gonna ask you a question yeah all right if you could get in the room with jeff bezos would you get in the room with him absolutely okay now if you had to pay ten thousand dollars to get in the room with jeff bezos would you get in there absolutely okay now tell me why because he's a billionaire and he can teach me how to make a lot more than five thousand boom or 10, right there so a lot of people on social media complain hey why are you charging for this why are you charging for this i can just get this information off of google i can get it off of youtube can you learn what jeff bezos knows from youtube no absolutely not mm. right college charges you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to teach you things that you're probably never going to use or things that everybody already know right and everybody's okay with that so if a millionaire is teaching you how to become a millionaire, why is that a problem? <laughs> right? If I can get in the room with Jeff Bezos right now for free, don't you think everybody would get it? But I think a lot of people have to understand the value and the, and the value of people's time. And mm -hmm. once you can understand the value of people's time, you'll understand why people like Grant Cardone and, you know, all these other big uh, guys are charging so much for courses and seminars and things like that why because the information that they're portraying out there the information that they're giving you can make you a millionaire and again knowledge is key it's about who you know it's about what you know i agree 100 percent. and i think a lot of people um take that mindset towards people um selling their time because they don't value their own time yeah. they if they really value their own time they would look at that nine to five they're working and realize it's not worth it at all yeah. but they don't even value their own time so that's the reason why they look at someone else selling their time and and say yeah. let's say it's five thousand dollars to talk to me for an hour. Well, if my five, if my time is worth five thousand, if I could make five thousand dollars if I wasn't talking to you, then that's my price. That's how much it's worth. But a lot of people have taken their time and said it's worth twelve dollars for that hour. They said it's worth fifty cent yeah. per minute. And so that's the reason why they look at you when you're trying to give away this knowledge in your time, and they say it's not worth it. Well. Take that $12 that someone else is giving you and you won't learn how to make 5000 yeah. for yourself within an hour. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have to change their mindset and, and get out of that um, hourly wage mindset and start looking at an entrepreneurship mindset because an entrepreneurship mindset doesn't say I can make $12 an hour. It says I can make 1000 to 5000 an hour. It says I could make five to $500 an hour. Within that space of time, I could sell this 
or I could buy and trade this, or I could buy low, sell high, or I could yeah. invest in this, make passive income with this. And that's the difference between the two different mindsets. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, kind of tapping into a different subject, I kind of want to tap into goal setting. You know, I think yeah. uh, goal setting is very, very important. Uh, we talked briefly about it, about writing a list of goals, but I think goal setting is really going to be, again, a cornerstone of your success. Of course, goal setting was a cornerstone for my success, also um, his success too. Why is goal setting so important? Because it gives you a clear cut picture of where you want to go. All right, I'm going to say it again. Goal setting is so important because it gives you a clear cut picture of where you want to go. All right, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to write down your goals. All right, you're going to have to stick them around your room. Yo, every in my house, I got just words everywhere. Just, just different things everywhere. Why? Because if you see it enough, you're going to act upon it every single day. Literally, I have in my bathroom, I will make $500,000 a month every single month. Why? These are all law of attraction. Are right, you speaking into existence? You see it every single day. You're going to start to move like that every single day. You're going to start to dream about that every single day. Right, I remember when back in the day, me and my brother, man, we used to sleep on the floors. Uh, you might not believe it, but back in the day, me and my brother used to sleep on the floors. Why? Because there wasn't that much space in the apartment. All right. But we used to just go to sleep talking about, yo, one day we're going to make it. One day we're going to make it big. One day we will be millionaires. And we said it enough, right? We believed it enough to the point that we started to act upon it. Now, did we have a million dollars? No. Nope. No, we did not. Did we have any dollars really? No. Nope. Not really. <laughs> but we had a vision. We had a dream. Right. So that's all you really need. You have to have a vision. You have to have a dream. If you can have a vision, if you can have a dream and you can act upon that dream every single day, you can hit your goal. Right. But again, you're going to have to have goals in order to hit it. Yeah, this is very true. And I think that plays into the whole um, mindset of a millionaire. And, and, and a great book for that is called Think and Grow Rich. And it kind of just talks about the fact that your brain and your tongue has a lot more power than you think. And that taps into the Bible as well, because the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so there is a lot of different places that will tell you that the things you think and the things you say become real. They manifest. Manifesting is real. When you say something enough, it becomes real. You say, I am rich. You say, I am wealthy. I will make a million dollars. Watch how quick your life starts to turn around once you start throwing those words out into the atmosphere. This entire room that we're in right now is filled with I am rich, is filled with I am wealthy, is filled with I will never have a lack of money. And so if that is all in the atmosphere, how can I be poor or how could I ever, how could I ever be broke? When that's in the atmosphere, yeah. go read that book and it's going to tell you about several stories of people who just spoke something enough times and was able to turn that into real manifestation is real. And a lot of people need to start getting out of that defeatist mindset and get into the mindset of a winner, because that's the difference between being poor and being rich. It's your mindset. Yeah. You know, the brain actually doesn't know the difference between reality and what you think. So. If you say enough times, hey, I'm rich, I'm successful, I'm blessed, then that will manifest into your life. But if you say, hey, I can't do this, or I can't do that, or this is too hard, or I'm never going to be successful, or ever the world hates me, then guess what? All that negative energy is brought into your life, and that's what's going to manifest into your life. It's very true, and that's where depression comes from. That's where anxiety comes from. It's all the things that you're telling yourself in your head and you're allowing to become real in the actual atmosphere. And that goes in the, and you cannot be successful with a mindset like that. And that plays right into the, the whole, the idea of speaking things into reality. And so a lot of us need to take a step back from our lives and think about the things that we're thinking. We need to change our mind. We need to change the things that, are, that we're allowing people to say to us. Because the more you allow people to say things, the more they become real. And so if you're able to get around people who are speaking positivity, who are, who are calling you saying, bro, I just, I think I have the new business idea, yeah. bro. I think I have a new way to make a thousand, an extra thousand dollars, an extra two thousand, extra five bucks a day. Mm -hmm. If they're calling you and giving you ideas, now you're allowing a room to grow. You're planting the seeds that are grow that are growing. But as soon as you have someone call you and say, bro, like, bro. I got no money, man. This bro, yeah. life is whack, bro. I don't even, bro. What do we even do? As soon as they that negative, they call you on the phone and they start giving you all these problems and about they're not they're giving you problems. They're not giving any solutions. If you call my phone and you give me a problem and you don't follow that with a solution, I hang up on you because you're not speaking any positivity. So yeah. why am I even listening? If you don't, you can call me with a problem. That's okay, but give me some ideas for solutions yeah. after. Otherwise, you're wasting my time. Thanks.
Nah, really. Y'all got to start hanging around people who call you and start having business ideas. I mean, I remember I, one time I was on a live and my brother texted me. He was like, yo, I'm, we about to buy this, this gaming truck. And I'm just like, yeah, cool. Right? Literally. A lot of y'all got friends saying, hey, uh, can you lend me 10 bucks? Or, hey, bro, uh, can you lend me uh, uh, $35 so I can go grab this KD real quick? Or I can go grab this eighth real quick? No, bro. How about you give me some How about you give me some ideas so that we can actually thrive, so that we can actually you know, be successful so that we don't have to keep doing what we're doing right now so that you don't have to ask me for $35 to grab you eight. How about you bring me some business ideas? And I think a lot of people have to understand that you don't have to have an abundance of money to have ideas, right? Ideas are just manifestations just waiting to happen, Literally. right? So what happened? You texted me, you said, yo, we about to get this gaming bus. And what happened? Get the gaming bus right next. Hey, we about to start up this trucking business. What happens? You start up the trucking business. Are your ideas? You guys gotta write down your ideas. Start calling up people and say, "Yo, I got an idea." Are you on board or you're not on board? And if they say, "I'm not on board," all right, cool. On to the next. Are you on board or you're not on board? You're not on board. All right, cool. On to the next. And even if you gotta do it by yourself, go through the struggles alone. I think a lot of people have to understand that it's okay to do things alone. As an entrepreneur, you're not always gonna have people who see your dream and wanna go on that journey with you because they don't see it yet. Right, but as soon as you make that money, right? As soon as you make that first couple thousand dollars, then they're gonna all be they're gonna be all for it, right? <laughs> they'll be right back. Right. But when you were going through the struggles and you asked them, Hey, I got this idea, this can make us rich, they didn't want to be with it. But now when they see you manifesting, they see you being successful, now everybody wants to hop on board, and that should tell you the kind of people that you're around. Don't hang with people. I call them leeches, man. Literally, I call them leeches. Yeah. They just suck your blood. They just suck all the money out of you. You know what I'm saying? They just suck you, suck you dry. Look, Thanks. hang around people who bring ideas to you, not people who leech to your skin and just, you know, suck everything off. And on top of that, stop caring what people think about you. People care so much about people that they don't like and that, that, that they don't like them. Okay? People hang around people that they don't like and that they don't like them and then care about what they think about their life. Even though you guys don't like each other, you guys haven't talked, you guys follow each other on social media still, but you're worried about posting that video. You worry about promoting your brand, promoting your, your, um, your so, you know, whether you're starting a fitness page or investing or whatever. You're worried about people that don't care about you. You don't want to post that because you don't want, you don't, want them to think something bad about you. You don't want them to see that you're going on a new journey or that you're trying to start up a business because it's small. Everyone starts with zero followers. We have a million followers now. We started with zero. We started posting when we were getting one and two likes on our posts. You have to start somewhere. And you're so worried about posting that video and posting that promotion for your own brand because you think that you're too small or that you're not big enough yet or that people are going to look at you and think, oh, why is he trying to do this? Why is she trying to start a business? She ain't doing nothing. And so because of that, you're not starting. You're scared to post every single day because you don't want your followers to think, why are they posting so much? When that's the only way that you can grow, stop caring so much about these people because those are the same people that will come back and ask you how you did it. Yeah. How did you grow your social media? By posting every day. How did you get rich? By investing, by telling people how to invest and then selling that. These are the ways that people are making money, but y'all too scared to do that because yeah. you care about what someone from high school who you don't even know anymore is going to say about your post yeah. or whether that person is going to like your post or whether they're just watching you, oh, how many views you got. Who cares? Yeah. You have to start somewhere. They don't care about you. Stop caring what other people think. This is yeah. the game of life in general. Yeah. Stop caring. All these people that you see that are rich, stop caring. <laughs> I had to completely stop <laughs> caring. I don't care what you think yeah. about my post. I don't care if it gets five likes or 5,000. Yeah. I put the knowledge out there. You can receive it or not. And that's the way I live my life. And that's why I was able to be successful. Yeah, man. <laughs> 100%. You got to really stop caring. All right. It's like people will go out and spend thousands of dollars on designer to impress people that don't care about them. Exactly. And you don't care. And, and they don't care about and, and you don't care about them. Exactly. Right. But when it comes to growing their business or when it comes to being successful, they're too scared to post. Literally. But you go out there. Right, you go out and buy a two thousand dollar Burberry bag, post it on the gram so that your man can, you know, you, you know that person gonna see, he's gonna be like, Man, he's flexing on him. No, you just look dumb because you spent two thousand dollars on a bag, but you have no funds. Exactly. Instead of trying to post pictures of your new business, you're out here trying to post pictures of a new Burberry bag. Ain't nobody give a damn about that bag, bro. Go out and start a business. Go out and make some real money. All right, because some of y'all spending y'all last. To impress people that don't even give a damn about you. Facts. <laughs> Why are you spending your last to impress people that don't even give a damn about you? Yeah, and you crazy. know damn well you don't even give a damn about them. That's crazy. And then you're too scared to post pictures of your business because you're too scared of what they would think. Oh, man, is he broke because he's trying to start a business? No, he's smart. 
He's doing something you can't do, exactly. right? But you go out and buy that fifty thousand dollars scat pack instead of investing it in your business. Right. I'd rather take a guy who invests that fifty thousand dollars into his business than going out and to buy a scat pack. Hundred percent. And I don't care if he's driving a goddamn hoopty. I, I'd rather take the guy who's driving a hoopty but got fifty thousand dollars in assets than the guy who's driving a fifty thousand dollars scat pack. Why? Because the guy with the hoopty knows what he's doing. The guy in the hoopty knows that hey, I'm gonna invest my money right now because hey, I'm young and I have time and I don't need to impress nobody. Because I don't care. And that goes back to not caring. Not caring what people think about you. Not caring if you're driving an O2 Honda. Not caring if you don't have much, you know, on your body, but you know that you have the assets to back your behind. Yeah, that's very true, man. It's very true. And that and, and in order to be successful, you have to stop caring. Yeah. I, I mean, there's no other way to say it. You have to stop caring. And it, it sounds bad, but it, it's the it's the most freeing thing you can do. Yeah. As soon as I stopped caring, when I first started posting, I would post like one video and then I would wait a couple of days. And if it wouldn't get likes, I'd be like, dang, man, you know, that's kind of embarrassing. I posted this video <laughs> and didn't get likes. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, I would post again. And then I'd be like, dang, yeah, I'm not getting no likes, man. Maybe when I stopped caring, I would post one one time in the morning get no likes i would post again at night get no likes i'll post again the next day get a couple likes and i'll post again i'll get five thousand likes i'm like okay beg post again the next day get no likes post again for another three weeks i'll get no likes but i'm still posting consistently consistently i'm still making money i'm still trading stocks i'm still investing but i'm still posting so i'm making all this money on the side and you would think i'm on social media you would think i'm broke because i'm trying to post yeah. But the whole time I'm making more money than I ever did and I'm just posting about it. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that when you see someone like grinding at their thing, they're they're doing stuff behind the scenes that you will never see. Most of the when when I do go uh go go ghost on social media for a little bit of time, people be like, "Yo, like is he not in his grind?" No, I'm over here working working on another seven-figure business that you wouldn't even know about that I would never say anything about until I feel like it. And that just comes into the play of being able to do what you need to do in order to be successful. If, if, if in your field, what you want to do is post to be successful, is gain followers to be successful, there is no way to do that without being consistent and stop caring completely. And I think that kind of taps into a whole different space dealing with social media. I think a lot of people have to understand that you can become extremely wealthy from social media. 100%. Okay, a person who's cooking on TikTok, I guarantee you, makes a lot more money than somebody who went to culinary school and got a job in that degree. Okay, somebody who is a fitness person on TikTok or Instagram teaching people how to get ripped on Instagram makes 10 times more than somebody who works at a gym. Why? Because the power of social media is increasing every single day. So if you can't use it to your advantage, it's either get in with it or get left out. I know you see these influencers out here, you know, doing what they have to do. They don't care if they if, if, if their fan base doesn't uh, um, mess with the post. They don't care if they don't get no likes. They're going to consistently post. Why? Because it's engagement. Yep. You got to start from somewhere. And everyone starts from zero. I say this all the time. I don't care if you have 100 followers and you start posting. I don't care if you have 5,000 and you start posting. We all start in the same place. And we all start knowing that people are going to see this. Some people may not like it, but that's just the risk that you have to take. And that goes even outside of social media. When you're starting your business and you're handing out business cards or you're telling people this is what I do, you have to be confident in that. When you say I'm a businessman, I'm an investor, I I invest in real estate. You, a lot of people want to invest in these things and they go up and they're for their first deal and they look scared and people in the business world can see that. If you're not confident and you don't believe that you are what you want to be, then you will never be that. And, and in the business world, it's not going to work. There's, there's all sharks in the business world. If you don't believe in what you're doing, you will get nowhere. No, no. so you have to you have to keep that mindset whenever whatever you're doing you attack it with all your everything that you have whether it's social media outside if you're working a job to get out of that situation no one's saying there's anything wrong with working a job you yeah. can work a nine to five use that nine to, but the, the thing is use that nine to five to get out of your nine to five yeah. don't just be in the nine to five you see I, I i respect someone who's working a nine to five i really do mm -hmm. I, the majority of people who are watching this are working nine to five. I have respect for that because you're hustling. At least you're not sitting on the couch doing nothing. But don't be content in that nine to five. That's my only problem. Don't be content working that until you die. Use that nine to five, pay your rent, pay for food, and put that money aside into your investments, into your business, into your assets. Because that's the problem. A lot of people get comfortable in the nine to five and they, they 
they take no money for themselves. They take no money for investments and they get stuck there. Nothing wrong with a nine to five, but make sure you're using that to get out of your nine to five. Nine to five to get out of your nine to five, that should be the number one thing on your mind. That's the point. That's the point, to make your passive overcome your earn so you can quit your earn. Yeah. That's the goal that you should set every single day. How can I increase? How can I add something else? I can assign this affiliate contract. I can get this car to rent out on Uber um, or to drive Uber or to do DoorDash or there's things that I can do on the side that are going to make me be able to make more money than I was in my job. And as soon as you can do that, you can go all in on that and quit the side gig. And that's the whole point. Never let your nine to five be your main thing. You always have to be working some, you have your nine to five and then your five to 10. What are you doing from five to 10 every single day? What business are you working? What investments are you working on? You have your nine to five, where's, what's your five to 10? And that's the question you have to ask yourself every single day. What's my five to 10? Cause everyone's always saying nine to five, nine to five. I don't want to work no nine to five. I'm an entrepreneur, nine to five. Oh, that's all I hear. Okay. What's your five to 10 then? And I'm gonna start asking people straight up. What's your five to 10, bro? <laughs> Like, what's your five to 10? What are you doing to get out of that situation? You talking about you don't want a nine to five? What's your five to 10? What are you working? What's your hustle? And that's the mindset that you have to have as an entrepreneur. Silver bullet. But hey, man, I think this was pretty great. It was. I think this was a very good first podcast, man. And I hope y'all enjoyed it too. Hope you did. Uh, chop some comments of what you learned or what you guys want to see. Yep. We're here for y'all. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Um, we appreciate all of you guys. We want to keep getting to this money. We're going to be dropping a lot more content just like this. Appreciate you guys, man. And we out. Love. All right. Prestige out, man.